maybe I am the favorite, but <laughs> but dad but dad in particular and I and as it pertains to JJ, dad and I's relationship changed a lot when I played because he knew D Lyman so well. Um, and he could watch film of guys and know who they are, not only on the field but off the field. He knows how they behave. And you've spent time with my dad. He's a bright yeah. guy, and, and he know he knows oh, yeah. ball as as good as any of us. He's also compared um, a little bit in like the way that he could rush inside. And when I had edge. to when I had to play guard, yeah. and JJ was out at end, it wasn't like I was preparing for my three technique the whole game. I had to prepare for him to reduce. I had to pre- prepare for the spinner looks with you and Merciless walking around pre snap. Clowny, offensive fucking, What's Clowny doing in the deep? When third? I got in the when I got in the the league, I want you to know that you were the most hated guy in every offensive room. Everybody hated JJ. <laughs> J. Watt. And as I got older, I realized that they hate us because they ain't us is a real thing. Yeah, a real Everybody thing. wanted to be able to block you, everybody be able to, to beat you, but you always made guys look silly, whether it was winning at the top of a rush with a sack or winning um, a- after a failed bull with your hands up and you swat the ball, pick it, pick six. Like, Very frustrating. That, it's, I want you to know that the hatred that you experienced from O Lyman was actually our form of respect. And, and dad's, dad's role in this, to go full circle, um, he was the only one that could really go inside the mind of a J.J. Watt before before mm-hmm. he could put me I- I- into what you were thinking before the games happened. He'd be like, you're going to see this yeah. based on what you guys have put on film. Expect this. You so was he saying? harder was, on you or was he harder on Chris? He was harder on me. He, could... he was harder on Chris because he played the position, but I think he was firstborn. just informative for I me. I do think the firstborn wears the, ki- the parents out to the point that like, by the time middle child comes along, like he's got it easy. And also him and my dad are like the same person. Me and my dad are different enough to where, you know, like he's not going to always identify with me. Kyle and him, it's like looking in a fucking mirror. Which can be tough sometimes to but, hang but out. But this is the question I had about JJ and like you, you talked about preparing for JJ. What was your job in the Houston defense? Because yeah. I used to watch you and be like, I want to play in that. I want to be JJ Watt. This guy, he's up and down the line. It looks like he, you know, if he wants to go to the A, he's go to the A. If he wants to go to the B, like how much freedom did you have? Because that made things really difficult, I think, for other people trying to prep for you. Well, I can tell you the play, the place you want to play is in a Wade Phillips defense then. Because mm-hmm. Wade Phillips is the best. I mean, you just look at the players that he's coached over his career um, and what he's been able to do. And, I mean, you look at Aaron Donald, obviously played in his defense for a few years there as well. And he did a very, very similar thing. I mean, we both played that four technique in base and then we would either play a three or five we go basically anywhere on third down um and i think that's what wade is really really good at he, he plays a lot of man coverage uh he has a lot of guys tightened up behind you so that you get that extra quarter second Beautiful. that extra half second um but he also lets you roam free up front and he'll send five a lot of times so that you do catch more one-on-ones than you normally would uh and he's just he's he lets you play and after you prove to him that you're capable of doing it then he gives you the freedom and he'll, he'll put you over the right guys. He'll get you in the right situations to try and create those one-on-one matchups. And I, I don't think that myself, AD, or anybody who's ever played for Wade would, would say we did it by ourselves. We did it because we had a great coach that also put us in great position. When you were stunting and, re- you know, like from a four-eye and you had to either cross face or, or uh, pop back into the B, no. you know, I feel like you got a lot of mileage out of – not just winning your one-on-ones, but also you were good at pressures and that sort of thing, which is a whole other skill. What was your thought process? Say, you know, there's a there's an edge rusher coming off the left side. You're in a four eye, and and you're coming down on that guard. Uh, you know, like you made the swim move look easy. That's usually the first thing they tell guys don't do in the NFL because you're going to get they're going to hit you with the clear. Uh, you know, you're going to get hit in the yeah, chest. Right in the chest. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, t- talk me through your your thought process as you're bearing down on a guard and just the, the matchup, um, you know, advantages that you have. So my thought process is always to put them in an extremely uncomfortable position. If you watch an offensive lineman practice every single day, they work on their kick steps every single day. They work on that shuffle, shuffle, punch, shuffle, shuffle, punch. They get into a rhythm. They get into this flow that they know they're extremely comfortable doing this movement every time repetitive on their second step. They love the punch. I want to get them out of that rhythm. How can I possibly get you to either have to shorten your shuffle, elongate your shuffle, hold your punch, punch earlier than you want to. I want to do something where you haven't practiced it as much as you practiced everything else. So I loved 
I loved the uh, let's like the stutter bull, uh, and then I would turn it into other oh, things. Yeah. I would do a stutter, stutter swim, stutter bull, stutter uh, underneath. Stutter bull swipe. Be- bull yeah, jerk. because you all you do if you I would pop directly up out of my stance and just yep. shimmy in place. Every coach <laughs> on the planet will tell you that is the number one Don't thing do you that. do not do. But it makes us Never pop just, up. Yes. So you have to stop because if you keep kicking back, now I've got three yards of space. Yes, you got inside, You're inside. Yeah. Yeah. So I pop up, you pop up. Now we're both standing at the line looking at yes. each other. And I know, no offense, <laughs> most guys I'm more athletic than. So yeah, I, now I can do whatever I want. And you're standing straight up. So if I go straight through you, it's much easier to knock you backwards when you're standing up like I'm standing up than it is for you to try and block me because your weight's knocked yeah. down. Yeah. So that's I loved that position. When I could get you to stand up and we're just staring at each other, then I'm like, all right, this is over. And you can just choose. Now you can choose. Do I bull rush you? And even if I go for the bull and I can tell you're ready for it, then you just swim over the top. There's so many different aspects you can do on it, but I, I just – you had to have the athletic ability to stand straight up at the line of scrimmage. And and w- what kind of guard body gave you the most problems? Like if you ever had a problem, like a, a player or Huge a prototype? Guards. Huge, Huge guards. Like the big, the big, the big dudes. Uh, the two guys for the uh, Saints back in the day. Uh, Evan, Larry uh, War- oh, Jari uh, Evans Jari and Carl Evans Nix. Yeah. Nix. Dude, those guys were tough because like – even if they stand up, man, you ain't moving them. Like you are not mm-hmm. moving them yeah. no matter what. So they just took up so much physical space that it limited what you were able to do because the splits are smaller than between the next guy. And it's just like literally physical space was limited and that made it really hard. It's important that you mention those two guards because when you look at the successful offenses historically, there were offenses that were built from the inside out. People often talk about the blind side and the strength of the tackles, but if there's two elite guards playing, JJ, you can speak to this. It's going to be tough sledding for the D linemen. Yeah, and they don't need help. Yeah, no, it's really tough because they can they can do it by themselves and they solidify that inside. So then everybody has to go wider and further. And if I go wider as a three technique, I'm pushing my five to nine techniques further. Everybody's further away from the quarterback. And now, especially if you got a guy that knows what he's doing and can get the ball off quick, we can't get there. Like it's yeah. good, good guards, good interior play does make everything harder. And they also pass off games extremely well, which that is, if you can't run games and you can't make the offense wonder what you're doing, then you're in a really tough spot. There's nothing better than picking up on a game. Uh, I got a funny story to uh, tell you. Um, we were in the Pro Bowl together. It was my first year in the Pro Bowl, and you were about to run a gate. You were about to run a tech stunt, and Kyle Williams looked up at me, and he was in the three tech, and he said, "Text." <laughs> like he, t- he told he me that it was on JJ? He told me he was coming. He's like, "I don't want you to get killed." Um, <laughs> and he told me. And I remember. Kind of I backed out. It happened in front of me, and I was yeah. like, "Thank Jesus that Kyle Williams didn't screw Damn, me." Damn, Kyle. Me the bus. Damn, he was helping Kyle. me out. He was helping a young guy. Uh, out. He's a good man. He's a good man. He's a Kyle good guy. Good I remember. Yeah. I bought him a beer that night. He was like, "Keep your money, buddy." 